Right, hello there guys, welcome to the fifth and final part of this tutorial now. Um, so I'm back on the laptop and I'm basically just going to show you, really quick one, how you connect to uh, your friend's network if you're on an external network. So this network here, I've just run a speed test here, and you can see down there, three, so I'm on my mobile network now. Uh, as you can tell by the speed as well, I'm on my mobile network, so I'm not on the home network anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to it from an external source. So we're going to find P4V which is a perforce thing. And now instead of putting in the internal IP address here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to that uh, address, the host which you created on noip.com, which was fpsgametut.ddns.net. And then obviously colon and then the port. Um, now the user, go ahead and make a new user. Oh, I should I'm leave that blank for a second. Make a new user. And this is where it'll try and connect now and you can see there if this dialog box comes up it basically means you know what you've connected to it that's how you know we forwarded the ports it worked this is requested to connect to it and it's come through fine so we're going to fire up joel's laptop external uh, with a full name whatever password and email address um, we're not going to set up we're not going to set up a workspace um, i'm basically just going to go ahead and hit ok and as you can see in the depot there, wait a minute. Ah, I probably should have logged in with Joel's laptop because he already had a workspace ready. So we're going to go ahead and hit Joel's, wait, sorry, P4V. Let's fire that up again. Uh, and we actually called it Joel's, oh, we can browse. And we should be able to see Joel's laptop, that one there. And we can log into that. Now, if I go on over to my workspaces, I can switch to Joel's laptop workspace. And what I've done on the main computer that's on again next to the laptop now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to come on down here. And now let's just quickly show you again the same setup procedure for setting up um, connections to an external server from within Unreal Engine 4. So let's go find that Unreal Engine 4 project real quick. Here we are. Let's fire that up. No, yes, yes, okay. So let me just add a comment over here. So, so what I've just done is I basically put a comment in the, so let me just open this here just to prove that this is going on. So um, anyway, really quick, we'll connect to source control. So we're, again, we're using perforce. Again, it's now going to be uh, FPS game tut dot DDNS dot net colon 1666. With the username Joel's laptop, Joel's laptop rather, with Joel's laptop workspace. Accept the settings. Uh, now, if I refresh the first person character, you can see that it's actually checked out by me on my desktop workspace. And bear in mind again, we are actually on a mobile network right now. So the, the phone's connected to the uh, laptop using a, a USB cable, the tethering is turned on, um, and I'm actually on that mobile network. So I'm not on the same network, but I can still see who's checked it out and I can still connect to that source control server. Now what I'm gonna do on the computer here is save, and I'm gonna check that first person blueprint back in. Okay, and now I'm going to refresh it down here, and you can see that now it's not checked out, and we can now sync, so it will sync, so it's now going to download from the computer over the mobile network, and now if I turn this off, real quick, remember we still got that bug on Unreal Engine side, I do apologise for that bug, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to apologise on behalf of Unreal, but uh, my condolences from Unreal or whatever. I apologize on behalf of Unreal that that bug exists. They are looking into it as a, quite a few forums have mentioned. Uh, but unfortunately the only workaround at the minute is to close your editor to reconnect to source control and then continue from there after you um, sync. But you have to do it every time you sync. So let's say, you, let's say you've got a couple of friends working on a couple of different blueprints you want to wait until they're all finished, then sync, then restart your editor, then, you know, that's that's what you got to do, I guess. 
Um, anyway, so the server was uh, FPS game tut dot DDNS dot net call on sixteen sixty six. The username was Joel's Laptop, and the workspace was this one here. There we go. And now, when I open up the blueprint, what you'll be able to see is Hello Laptop. So I didn't write that in, remember? You've just seen that video. I did not just write that in. That's just come from the server up there. Now, what you can do is if I check that out on the server again, right, uh, and I go ahead and, for example, delete this, compile it, save it, check it back into the server, Right, with a little change list. Now what I can do down here is if I want to check it out, I see that I can't, or rather I can. And what I can do, you see the little exclamation marks come up now, the difference. What you can also do, interestingly enough, is you can come on down here to diff against depot. Now this looks at the differences between my version and the server's version. So I open up the event graph and I pan around and you can see here, um, I'll tell you which one's which in a second. So the left is the server and the right is the local version. So I just what I did on my main computer there was I deleted the destroy actor destroy actor node, synced it back up to the server, pushed those changes back up, you know, put the library but put the book back into the library, and now this is saying, okay, what's the server got and what I got? So you can you can see the differences. You know, if you're thinking, hmm, okay, so what has Joel actually done? You can you can go ahead and look at the differences before you pull them down from the server. So if you're not happy with these differences, you don't have to bring them down. You know, you could work on a local copy on a different workspace, but you can, you know, it just allows you to compare what, what's changed. Basically, you can see a side-by-side -side view of what's changed there. So that's it, really. That's how you set up a Perforce server. It's how you connect to it on your own computer. It's how you connect to it on a local, on a local uh, network. It's how you then set that local network up to be visible externally. And then it's how you connect from an external source. The only thing, sorry about that. The only thing that I've not got figured out is how to make it secure, right? It's quite strange because at no point did this ask me for a password to log into that Perforce server. So I, I'm going to do some digging in this. And maybe I'll re release a part six on how to secure the Perforce server later on when I figure this out. But at the minute, the best way I can recommend to keep your Perforce server secure, if you're working with friends on, and family and whatever, is to give your no IP host name a really obscure name. So a bunch of different numbers, characters and letters, .ddns.net, you know, something that no one will ever guess. Um, and then and then give that to your friends and family, the people working on the project. That way, you know, they only know the login details. Um, but I will take a look into that security for you guys, because I don't think it, I know there's, I know for certain there'll be a way that you can stop new users from adding users to the database externally without adding them you know that the host would need to add them internally before a, a user can come in basically some kind of registration system um so i'll take a look into that for you guys um but as for as for now you know this is this is suitable this will work for you and your friends um like i said if you want to make yourself secure go ahead and give that that host name a really obscure name um and until then, guys, stay tuned for more Million 4 videos. I'm actually starting on two projects at the minute. One I can't tell you anything about, and the other one I can't tell you anything about because they're both two projects in the making, but there you go. So I'm starting on two new games, working with two different people. One's with my friends, and one's with uh, actually a person that found my YouTube videos and reached out to me, and we're, working, we're going to do a collaboration now. So it's been taking a while to get this source control set up before we can start on that project, but that should be full steam ahead now. Um, so, yeah, I mean... That's it. That's how you're going to go ahead and get Perforce set up for Unreal Engine 4 and how you're going to go ahead and integrate it. Um, there were no other tutorial series out there that I well that I could find, or up-to-date ones rather, that talked you through this. So I hope this, if you're looking to do source control within Unreal Engine 4, if you're looking to work with friends and family and colleagues, whatever, um, I hope this has helped out. Uh, as always, guys, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do leave me a comment uh, in the description below what you thought of it.